A lot of you are praying for self-control in certain areas, but when God tries to whisper things to you, like don't do that or this isn't good for you, you ignore him, get irritated, and then you say, you know what, I'm gonna see for myself. In this video, we're going to talk about self-control. Now, as I was sitting in my quiet time, I heard the Lord say that you are asking him for things that you don't really want. How many times have you found yourself in prayer saying, Lord, help me with this. Help me to not do that. Maybe for you, it's help me to not procrastinate. Help me to not overeat. Help me to control my words, right? We're asking for these things. Help me to have more patience. But when the Lord tries to help us in those areas, we get irritated, we ignore him, and then we wind up doing what we want anyway. This happens the most often when we're praying for areas that require self-control. So some areas that people struggle with self-control are procrastination. You're always delaying something, waiting for things to be convenient. And if it's not convenient, you're just not going to do it. We struggle with self-control in food. Some of us with under eating, overeating, gluttony is a huge one. Some of you struggle with self-control in dedicating time for prayer and quiet time. Others of you for working out, gossiping. There's a whole bunch of areas that require self-control. And if you really want to see it, it's going to start with a surrender. A lot of times we try to produce self-control out of our own efforts, right? We think that the more we resist, the easier things will come. And the more we try to put all of this effort and practice into it on our own, that we will really begin to develop that self-control. But self-control is actually a fruit of the spirit and it is produced out of relationship with the Lord. And so the reason why you're probably not seeing yourself grow in the fruit of self-control is because you're not surrendering to the Lord when he's trying to help you. Which brings me back to the original point. A lot of you are praying for self-control in certain areas, but when God tries to whisper things to you, like don't do that or this isn't good for you, you ignore him, get irritated, and then you say, you know what, I'm going to see for myself. And then you wind up in the same cycle year after year battling with the same things that you're praying to be delivered from. If you are going to pray to the Lord for self-control, then you have to yield to him. So for many of us, we have self-control in different areas, some more than others. Like for me, I'm very disciplined and have a lot of self-control when it comes to executing and getting things done on time. And a lot of that has to do with the outflowing of my relationship with the Lord, because that's an area where I'm called to, right? I'm called to help other people execute the things that God has called them to do. And because of that, I had to go through severe pruning and, you know, a lot of like healing in those areas so I can get those things done. Now, there are other areas where I haven't been so surrendered to the Lord in my life. And one of those areas is food. So for me, I am an overeater and emotional eater, and I'm really trying to work on it. When I'm stressed out, I am eating and I'm eating a lot, especially after times of like fasting where you have like deprived yourself. I find like as soon as I hit the ground running, I am consuming everything. And I realize that it's not about a size, right? A lot of times we think that you may not struggle with overeating because you're smaller, but a lot of times it's an addictive mindset that tells you that you need to have more than what you really need. And so recently I have been praying against the spirit of gluttony because that's something that the Lord brought up in my prayer time. And I remember last week I got some red pea soup from the Jamaican store and it was bomb. And I remember I told myself they give you a huge portion and I'm always really full and I had made like some cornbread. So I was like, okay, I'm going to eat half of it now and then I'll eat half of it for dinner. Well, the first half was so good. I was like, you know what? Forget that. I'm just going to eat the whole thing. And it was a huge portion that really could have lasted, you know, two sizes. And so I remember as I was heating up my second portion, getting it all together, it was looking real good, y'all. I heard the Lord whisper in my ear, you're being gluttonous. And I was like, oh. I paused for a moment. I heard what he said. And I was like, you know what, Lord? We can just deal with this another time. I'm going to eat the rest of this soup and go on about my business. And y'all know what happened? I ate that soup and it was good, but I was exhausted. Like I had eaten so much to the point where I could not even move, speak, or do anything. And then I felt just like heavy and just, just mentally just drained afterwards. And sometimes, you know, that's what gluttony does. It causes us to feel like our eyes are bigger than our stomachs. And for me, I had literally been praying, God help me to overcome the spirit of gluttony. And here he was whispering, trying to give me help. And I'm ignoring him because I'm so focused on my desires, my passions, what I want in that moment. Right. And it was causing me to be rebellious. And so for you, maybe you have self-control when it comes to your eating, but you don't have it when it comes to working out, 
right? Or you don't have it when it comes to being disciplined in your prayer time, right? Because a lot of times we think that we're naturally going to have the desire to pray and spend time with God every day. But the flesh is always opposed to what the spirit wants to do. And so you don't realize that you're searching for an emotional motivation to spend time with God when sometimes it's a discipline that you put in place, right? Your relationship with God is not based on your feelings. There's a lot of things that you are not going to feel like doing. But prayer and spending time with God daily is a discipline. You choose to do it. And you can pray, of course, that God will give you zeal and a fresh fire, but sometimes it's not always like that. And it requires self-control saying, you know what, instead of binge watching my favorite TV show or binge scrolling, I'm going to spend time with God and put the time aside. Those are areas that we don't think about that we struggle with self-control. Another area is procrastination. It takes self-control to not give in to delaying something, right? A lot of times we have the assumption that we have more time than we really do. But a lot of you right now are experiencing the consequences of procrastination. And what does that look like? It looks like having to execute something out of season. So now you're experiencing a lot more stress and anxiety than needed, all because you didn't want to do things when you were supposed to do them. Now, does that mean that God will not give you grace to execute? No, but it will not remove the fact that now you have extra burdens and pressure on you in a season that God may have designed for you to rest. So no matter what area of self-control you struggle with, it's really important that we understand what self-control is and how we actually develop it. Now, what is self-control? Self-control is defined as the ability to control oneself, in particular, one's emotions and desires, or the expression of them in one's behavior, especially in difficult situations. Now, I love the part that says that it is the ability to control yourself, basically, in difficult situations. Self-control is needed for those moments where every type of obstacle and temptation is present. It is the ability to say no to something when you really want to say yes. It is the ability to hold yourself accountable when nobody is watching. It's one thing to practice control when other people are cheering you on or holding you accountable. But when it's just you and no one is looking, that is when you really need to walk in self-control. And honestly, sometimes it can be so difficult because there are areas in our life that just feel like they control us, like they run us, right? Some of your appetites and desires are so big, you just feel like you cannot rest until you get that fix, right? You cannot do certain things. You just can't get your mind to do certain things. And it just feels like an overwhelming burden. So how are we supposed to walk in self-control when some of these things in our lives actually feel like mountains? This is where the Holy Spirit comes in. Now, we're going to read about the fruits of the spirit, which is found in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. But I want to back up a little bit and start at verse 17, because this talks about the war between the flesh and the spirit and why we sometimes struggle to do the things that we know we want to do, but can't seem to find ourselves able to do. It describes that warfare that we experience when you want to move forward, but everything is pulling you back. So let's read Galatians chapter 5, verse 17 through 25, and I'm going to read it in the New Living Translation. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting against each other so that you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the Spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. 
Let's break this passage of scripture down. The first part of this is saying that your flesh is going to be opposed to what the spirit wants to do. Your flesh is going to be opposed to what your spirit wants to do. This is why you have desires to do good things, but then your flesh is like, mm, I think we should go this way. I think we should just sit around today. I think that we should just give them a piece of our mind instead of being silent and practicing love and practicing self-control with our speech, right? You are going to be at war. There is a war happening whether you realize it or not. However, you are always able to win the war because you have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. So it's not enough to just acknowledge that you are in a war. You have to recognize that you have victory over it, right? The Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you to help you to do the things that you can't seem to do. You cannot change yourselves. And a lot of you have been struggling and beating yourselves up and frustrated because you want to get better. You want to press past these things, but you're trying to do it in your own strength. Self-control is a fruit of the spirit that flows out of relationship with the Lord. In another translation of Galatians 5, instead of self-control, they use the word temperance. And that word temperance means the virtue of one who masters his desires and passions. Now, what I found so interesting when studying this is that that word passion means a strong and barely controllable emotion. How interesting is that? Because that's exactly how it feels when we are struggling to have self-control in some areas. We feel like literally sometimes we are boiling over and we cannot rest until we give in. Or that thing feels so strong, it feels like something is sitting on us, preventing us from moving forward. But the fruit of the spirit of self-control helps you to contain those things that feel like they are uncontrollable. The Lord knows what you struggle with and he knows that you're not going to be able to do it without his help. So the question is, how do we walk in the fruit of self-control? The very first thing that you have to understand before I can go into any practical steps is what I've been saying from the very beginning. It is that self-control is a fruit of the spirit and you're not going to get it without relationship. A lot of times we think we can follow a one, two, three system without realizing that it is through studying the word. It is through meditating on the word, right? Getting it down inside your heart that you will truly be transformed. The more time you spend with God, the more you will become like him. He gave me the example that if you spend time around somebody who's always complaining, more than likely when you leave their presence, you're going to start complaining. If you spend time with someone who is always angry and reckless and does whatever they want, the longer that you hang around them, the more likely you are to adopt those habits and that personality. The same thing works with the Lord. The more time that you spend in his presence, the more time that you spend absorbing and meditating on the word, the more you will become like him. We are made in the image of God and we are renewed in that image the more time that we spend in prayer, in worship, in that quiet time with God. So it's not about trying to be perfect or doing all these outside things. If you would just prioritize relationship with the Lord, right? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. All other things would be added unto you, including self-control. You will find that your desires will change. Your appetites will change out of relationship with him. Now, the second part of that after prioritize relationship is listening, right? How can you spend time with the Lord and not listen to what he says? If you really want to walk in the fruit of self-control and every other fruit of the spirit, you have to yield to what the Holy Spirit is saying. That means that when you are about to do that thing, when you're about to give into laziness and the Lord prompts you to press forward, or maybe he says, okay, you usually fall asleep during prayer. So he prompts you to get up and stand up and walk around or to go downstairs. You now say, okay, Lord, I hear you speaking to me. And now I'm going to yield to you and do what you're saying versus saying, you know what? I'm going to do this my way. I'm just going to stay right here because I don't feel like getting up. And then you wind up falling asleep and then getting upset because you fell asleep during prayer when the Lord tried to guide you somewhere else or let's say you've really been trying to work on your patience and you've been praying Lord help me to be patient help me to grow in this area well guess what when an opportunity comes by and somebody's offending you irritating you or agitating you and your first response is to want to go off on them but you hear the prompting of the Lord telling you to be silent or to respond in kindness. You don't ignore what the Holy Spirit is saying because then you won't get to experience the fruit of what it's like to walk in the Spirit. 
You surrender and say, you know what? I'm going to keep my mouth shut because even though I want to say something right now, I hear you, Lord. And because you are Lord of my life, right? You are also Lord of my responses. And I'm going to listen to what you say. You do not just want to be a hearer of the word, but you want to be a doer of the word. And that is the bridge from what you're praying to what you want to see. When you pray for something, you have to respond to the instructions that the Lord will give you if you want to see the answer. So when you pray for patience, there are going to be opportunities that require you to exercise your patience. When you pray for strength, do not be surprised when you find yourselves in moments of weakness and you have to pull on the Lord for prayer. You have to pay attention to how the Lord answers your prayers. A lot of times we are expecting to become a new person overnight, but that's not how it works. You grow in the fruits of the spirit by continuously walking with the Lord and yielding to his instructions. They're not suggestions, right? When the Lord tells you to do something, it's not a suggestion. He's telling you because he knows what's on the other side. Now, after you prioritize relationship with the Lord, you start meditating and studying the scripture so that you can be transformed by the renewing of your mind. But there are also practical things that you have to do on your end. And a lot of those things involve setting boundaries. A lot of you are playing with fire, right? You are asking the Lord for self-control in areas, but you are setting up flames around yourself and then going like this, trying to see how far you can get. If you know that you struggle with lust, you need to stop consuming all of this media around lustful things, the music that you listen to, the movies that you watch, the people and the conversations that you entertain. Those things are playing with fire, right? You don't want to set yourself up in an environment for you to fall and then get mad when you actually do. Or maybe you're struggling with procrastination and laziness and you've been asking God to help you to get up and stop being lazy, but then you find yourself working out of your bed. What do you think that's going to produce? You have to begin to create an environment for you to flourish. What do you need in order to walk out this self-control? What things do you need to remove so that you can see what you have been asking for? That's where the practical things come in. That's where your works meets your faith, right? Faith without works is dead. And sometimes we just want God to do all the work. But at the end of the day, again, it is a following of his leading over time where you will begin to see the fruit of the things that you have been praying for, especially in areas of self-control. So let's recap. How do we receive self-control? Number one, prioritize your relationship with the Holy Spirit. Spend time in prayer, right? Spend time reading and studying and meditating on the word of God. That is what transforms your mind. It transforms your habits, your behaviors, and it helps you to be sensitive to the Lord's voice so that when you are in those moments where, you know, you have to choose between walking in self-control or giving in, you're able to hear the leadings of the Holy Spirit and listen to them. If you want to walk in the fruits of the Holy Spirit, you have to follow the Spirit's leading. Number two, set boundaries. What are the areas in your life that you need to make some adjustments so that you are not giving in so easily? Identify the things in your life that are pulling you away from the results that you want and set boundaries. Remove them. Whatever you need to do, set those boundaries in place. Don't play with fire. If you know that you have a temptation that you're easy to give into, you have to set boundaries so you're not putting yourself in a vulnerable position. And it doesn't mean that you're going to be able to avoid the temptation to not give in because self-control is the ability to look at that temptation and choose otherwise because you're surrendering to the leading of the Holy Spirit. So just do those three things and allow yourself the grace to unlearn the areas that you usually give in. You spent your whole life just giving into things, not fighting back, falling into those things. So overnight, you're not going to be able to develop self-control. But the more you spend time with God, the more you enforce and honor those boundaries that you set, the more you will begin to see the fruit of self-control in your life. So the next time you pray, God, help me with this. Help me to stop doing that. Listen to what he is saying. Those convictions are there for a reason. He wants to help you and he wants to remind you that this is the thing that you have prayed for and he's always here to help. I hope this has been helpful for you. I'll leave the scriptures below that I mentioned and I will talk to you guys in the next video.